What's going on? What's going on, people? How's everybody doing today? We're going to do a live stream. I know I don't do this too much, but I got to get back into the market. What's going on? Let me just mute. What's going on, people? This. All right. So I think I got some really good you know, information for you guys. Um, I got one computer screen. You guys know I used to have like uh, 17 different monitors. I got one computer screen here. So I'm going to try to answer some comments. But um, if I don't, bear with me. Let me mute my notifications. Excuse me, man. I'm a scrub. I'm doing like the bare minimum for this live stream. But the research is fire. Today, I want to I wanna just come in with kind of like a massive amount, announcement for everybody in cryptocurrency. Um, you know, I got to keep your mind right. This is what I'm here for. This is what I do. Um, you know, I'm fighting the bears, right? I'm fighting the bears with the axe. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, things are looking a little bit shaky. Uh, I will still say, though, uh, we are probably in the best asset class on planet Earth. Um, but yeah, let me just wait for a couple people to join. It's not I'm not going to lollygag too much in the beginning. You guys can rewatch it uh, if you missed the beginning. But I'm going to wait about a couple of minutes. Uh, let me see if I can get some questions from you guys. Let me just hop up on YouTube. See, like, I don't live stream, man. I don't live stream. I just make videos. Bear with me here. But I think live streams are probably uh, really good. Let me mute myself. All right, here we go. Good time to buy. Okay, we got some questions here. All right, I got some questions here. Um, yeah, so someone just asked me, are you waiting for the Fed announcement before buying in? I'm going to be real with you guys. So um, on Wednesdays, I have live Q&As with FS. Uh, and, you know, we are literally in the Fed meeting going to jump on a live stream um, in Fundamental Secrets uh, and, you know, really sit there and um, just make sure, uh, you know, I, we don't know. That's the thing. Like, we don't know if we're going to jump in at the after the Fed meeting. We don't know what they're going to do. We don't know if it's going to be uh, something crazy or you know, the, the whole point is that, you know, I'll just be watching it very closely and I'll make my decisions as I see them. Uh, so, yeah, I'll be watching the Fed meeting on Wednesday. It's going to be kind of important. I wanted to show you guys some of that. So, yeah, does Phantom recover? I don't know. I jumped out of Phantom. I have a little bit of Phantom. Um, but, yeah. I don't know, man. Phantom, they lost the lead developer, which kind of shows everything I need to know. It's not their lead developer. It's hard to explain these things. But, like, one of their best developers. I mean, Phantom's kind of looking like Binance Smart Chain word to Marty. Marty was like, yo, uh, Phantom looks like Binance Smart Chain uh, scams and stuff. And that's usually what happens with EVM compatible chains is we get a lot of scams because they could just duplicate the uh, blockchain at will. So, yeah. Hey, uh, let me ask some questions, guys, for wait for, you know, maybe uh, five, 10 minutes for some people to come in. Pembroke Pines in the building. I'm not from Pembroke Pines, but that's like 20 minutes away from me. I'm actually from uh, Fort Lauderdale, Sunrise area, Sunrise, Florida. Nobody knows what Sunrise is, so I say Fort Lauderdale. Uh, so yeah, we're in the building somewhere over here. All right. Uh, what happened? What happened? Are we in a bear market? It just depends on which I think we've already been in a bear market probably, but it just depends on when the bear market is over for me. Um, this is again, like guys, guys, take a deep breath, opportunity time. Like I do understand that people might be freaking out, but to me, this is just like a big test of my character. It's like, you have to look at it like a big test of your character. Like are you going to be able to make it out or are you just going to cry like, like you know, rage quit? Like, don't rage quit. Right. Let's let's uh, combine our heads. Let's let's make it to the end, basically. Um, hold on one second. Let me just add something. Uh, I'm just trying to get this thing going over here on my YouTube side. Uh, so let's just wait for some people to join up. Um, got a Cardano video likely coming out today or tomorrow. So pay attention to that. I just wanted to come out here and really drop this content for you guys, to be honest. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. I think we can get started now. We got about 193 people watching. Hold on. Let me see. How do I get in the back end again? Let's see. Um, hmm. Yeah. So I just want to, you guys could ask me questions for now. Just give me two seconds. Hmm. All right, here we go. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to change some things around uh, for the SEO. But yeah, uh, 
we got some really good uh, content for you guys today. Give me like two minutes and I have a whole entire presentation for you on what's going on in the market specifically today. So stay tuned for that. All right, here we go. Finally, I got the live control room. That's what I've been trying to look for. All right, I'm doing this in Zoom. I usually do this in uh, other places. All right, so we're getting started here. We have Hi Alex, Opportunity, Polkadot. Don't spam things, guys. Alex, a while back, I got scammed under your character impersonator. It hurt my heart. I'm sorry, guys. You know, that's why I make these education programs so that people don't get scammed. But like, bro, there's nothing I can do. Like, I've tried everything to try to stop the bots. It's just a ridiculous problem that it's just like insolvable. I think YouTube and uh, Twitter and all these social media platforms need to figure it out. What's your top three coins or tokens, in your opinion, that would explode? I mean, that's like a really specific question. I have a list in the Fundamental Secrets. So I have a huge list. Um, of coins that I uh, am watching right now. And then I'm waiting for the market re to reverse. Alex, you're great. Thank you so much. I uh, appreciate you guys. Um, first time I watched you live, a lot of your videos. Thank you, man. I, I don't do lives too much. I think I'm going to make a better effort at joining live. Can you guys put ones? Do you like lives or do you like regular videos? If you like live videos, put ones in the chat. If you like just like the regular videos where I cut out all the nonsense, put twos in the chat. Do that for me. Cause I, I, I don't know, like I see a lot of YouTubers are doing, I can do both. Like I like lives. I, honestly, lives are easier for me because I don't have to edit anything. But I think like when it comes to the edited videos, like you guys can kind of get straight to the, to the answer quickly. You know what I mean? So um, yeah, I don't know. I guess you'll tell me, but okay. It seems like everybody likes the live videos. Okay. One and two. Yeah. I'm going to do both always. Uh, but you know, I think I think the live videos give you a different perspective. So right now I'm coming in with the lives because I think right now um, it's a specific time where everybody kind of needs to not make mistakes. Right now, we just need to not make mistakes. Um, and I, I want to like, you know, ease people's heart a little bit. All right. Um, Starting a new portfolio in 2022, 2021 is an investment portfolio now. <laughs> That's hilarious. It should always be, a, not all of them, but yeah, the announcement is that I want to say, I want people to not like panic sell. Like I got to make these videos to get your attention so I can kind of give you all of the news breaking down because it doesn't look that bad. Like I do see uh, the Federal Reserve coming in with some heat on Wednesday um, and they might really shake up the markets. Uh, but I I'm telling you right now, um, you know, it's just crypto. I can't really lump it into the category of everything dying. Like I just can't say crypto is just going to destroy everything. Uh, I mean, uh, the Fed market is going to destroy cryptocurrency market because it just looks like the most likely for people to adopt uh, when all of markets are going down. So yeah, sorry. I'm just trying to read questions and say things at the same time. Alex, I'm so ready to drop the Slack. Now I can't contact you anymore. Um, yeah, what's up, JP? Just hit me up on Twitter. Hit me up on Twitter. Um, yeah, that's a plug for me. Uh, guys, follow me on Twitter, man. Follow me on Twitter. Um, definitely coming out with some more content. You, you like that light in the back, professional lighting. Um, dropping way more content. I'm getting crazier in crypto. Uh, dropping FS 2.0. You know, for me, like I'm getting my life in order. I, I just recently had two kids, uh, twins. So just hard adjusting. But I mean, they're six months old now, seven months old now. Uh, so, you know, I'm getting back into the swing of things and I think we're going to be coming out with some heat. I'm going to come out with the best videos on the internet. I'm sorry, but you know, uh, I do want to ask this question. Uh, there's two different areas, um, that I am going to be, uh, making videos for, for education. I feel like the cryptocurrency community kind of got a little bit stagnant. Like everybody's kind of doing the same thing. Uh, they're showing, um, they're showing basically, News or TA or on-chain metrics, right? That's basically the gist of all over YouTube. So I want to ask you guys a question. Does this sound um, like it's interesting? So like, I don't know if you guys ever heard of that guy, Zach XBT on Twitter, but he basically investigates uh, NFT and crypto scams. It's called blockchain investigation. So um, is that something you guys would be interested in? Like uh, being able to map out the blockchain and dive deep and looking to where the transactions go, maybe following some whales, maybe following some smart money and seeing what they're doing. Do you guys think that would be uh, that would be interesting to do? Let me know uh, in the comment section. Also, there's a second area I want to tap into. Um, so like Willy Woo and some of the biggest guys in the game. Um, they're definitely uh, aggregating their own charts. So they don't really go on trading view. I mean, you'll see them on trading view, but really when they're making their big decisions, um, they're going on, um, they're making their own charts from scratch. 
which requires, uh, you know, you bought, like getting data from somewhere. Um, and then, you know, putting that data into your own personal chart and understanding all of the math behind the charts and exactly how they work. So like, for example, you know, it, it, like, um, logarithmic regression is one that's really popular. If I, if I showed you guys how to make a logarithmic regression chart from scratch, would that be interesting to you? Um, uh, like on-chain investigation and data science, creating your own charts, I think are the two areas that nobody really knows how to do. And to become like kind of like a professional quantitative trader, it's like the next step. Like if you were to work at a hedge fund, this is what you would need to do. So my goal is, uh, you know, to get into that world because I already know how to do it to a certain extent. I'm not a professional at it, but I am like in the next three months going to take it very serious. And then I'm going to educate everybody on how to use the blockchain for real, like getting the raw data and being able to craft charts, uh, being able to look at it from a quantitative perspective, as well as diving deep into the blockchain, uncovering these whale wallets, these smart wallets, blockchain investigation. Like the, these skills will likely get you hired, like at like a, a trading firm. Um, you know, there's all types of uh, of incubator uh, type. Um, what are they called? Businesses that like incubate uh, cryptos, and you could become uh, a market maker or you know a, a quant trader. There's just so many areas you can dive into, and I think the the point is is that people just really don't know how to use the blockchain. What's happening right now are, is people are kind of using all the skills they they learn from like traditional trading or like Forex, and they're coming into the market and doing the same thing over and over again. But the, the point is, is that we have the blockchain. So everything's open and transparent and you should be able to use that, right? So these are my goals for the channel. This is my goal for FS 2.0 um, moving forward. I, I want it like when I came out, like you guys know, a lot of you've been following me for a while. When I first came out into crypto, I kind of educated the whole entire industry on fundamental analysis to a professional level. Now, I mean, people... I wasn't the first to research a project, right? Don't get me wrong. Like people were researching their project even before I was even in crypto. But I will say what I did is I made it professional. I came out with like a, an actual checklist and as and like a specific, um, you know, system called uh, Fundamental Secrets, where I dive into uh, these coins with with the greatest fundamental analysis on the internet. I think that's what I did uh, for crypto. And what I want to do now is educate people on the next level. That's my point is I want to get people to the next level because for me as a trader, that is the next level. So if I do it myself, you know, my goal is to educate you guys as well. So that's basically the gist of where I'm moving. Um, I like these videos because it allows me to talk freely, you know, on camera, it's a little bit different when I'm editing videos. But yeah, I'm gonna answer questions for like two minutes and then I'm gonna jump into a screen share and show you guys what I got over here. Um, and I think it would be interesting. I'm going to be going over news. I'm going to be going over price of the traditional markets, on-chain investigation and or analytics. I'm going to be looking into the macro conditions. And then there's this really cool project that I've been recently uh, talking about with my group uh, towards the end of the video uh, where you have these bridgeless swaps. I want to di dive into that a little bit. But yeah, uh, teaching strategy is important. People don't understand blockchain. Yeah, it's true. Like teaching strategy is important. Like you see all these channels and, and I respect everybody in crypto. You know, everybody's spreading the good word of crypto. So I love you know, YouTubers in general, and there's no negative things to the, those people, but they all, they never teach you how to do it is the problem I'm having. I don't know anyone that teaches you how to their strategies work. Right. Um, yeah. So I'm going to do that. I'm going I'm to teach you how the strategies work, but yeah, follow me on Twitter, Claire. Um, my social media manager is dropping the link in there. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter. All right. So what do we got here? Alex, do your memberships expire? Yes. So I have a coaching, but I also have a digital course. A digital course never expires, but the coaching, of course, you know, that's, that's expensive. Uh, so yeah, that will expire. It's a month to month thing right now. So you guys can go, uh, if Claire can drop uh, the $5 five-day trial in the chat. Actually, I have it here for you guys. I'll drop it myself. Yeah. So $5 five-day trial, take advantage of that. And then follow me on Twitter. Um, yeah. All my coin calls. Hey man, like I'm going to get more active in the, if this is a bear run, this is where I'm getting active. This is where all my coin calls are about to come. Like they're going to come. I'm being patient. Okay. I'm being patient. I want to wait for this bottom. I'm trying to get rich. I don't know about you guys, but I'm trying to get rich and people get rich in a bear run. All right. So this excites me. You can see my energy. You can see my videos. This excites me at the top of the market. You know, this is when we become all sluggish and stuff. I made a whole bunch of money. Great. You know, like it's fine. Um, but like now at the bottom of the market, it's like, yo, I want my next top. I want my next top. I want to get rich. I made multiple millions of dollars this cycle, but really I'm trying to make $50 million next cycle. 
How about this? Everybody leave a goal of how much you want to make next cycle. Leave a goal, a goal, a goal in the chat. Let me know, like for real. I'm trying to buy the dip. You know, it's funny because the experienced crypto guys are like all happy. But then like the new guys that just came in, they're all like beat because they're losing money. Yes, you are losing money now, but these are unrealized losses. Just like at the top, it's unrealized gains, right? So take it for what it is, right? Think about it. Why You have to flip it. Like you just, there has to be something that clicks in your head when you realize that like, hey, maybe when everybody's scared, this is the, this is the opportunity time, right? 5K because I don't have a lot of money. It's okay, man. $5,000 is life-changing in some people's, uh, depending on where you live. Somebody wants to make 10 mil. Somebody wants to make 250K, 500K. It looks like we want to get a, a lot of millionaires. Now, I've minted millionaires. In 2021, I had a lot of people make millions of dollars in fundamental secrets. A lot of people. I had a lot of people make their first six figures in fundamental secrets. So I think this time I can make like, I think I probably got like millionaires in fundamental secrets. Just a guess. This is probably not true, but anywhere from like 15 to 20, definitely 12 for sure. 12 plus millionaires in fundamental secrets. But the thing is next cycle, my goal, I'm about to get a hundred people to a million dollars next cycle. Now that might take a little while, but patience is everything, right? Patience is everything. No matter what you want to do, patience is required. So to make a million dollars in two, three years for next cycle, you will never find any track on planet earth schooling. I don't care what job you work at. It is very unlikely for you to make a million dollars. Usually it takes people 30, 35 years to make a million. So buckle down, Take a deep breath. Like I always say in my videos, it's time to rise above the noise and make your first million dollars. If you want to make a million, if you want to be part of the 1% of the world, you have to do what the 1% are doing. It's as simple as that. If you act like retail and you get all scared, good luck. If you want to get rich, look at my energy. I'm going to make $50 million. If you feel me on that, let's go. If you want to keep crying about the market, that's on you. In three years, you're going to realize, right, get the same mistake you met, made last cycle. Same mistake. Market's going up. You know, everybody's, uh, you know, starting to come in. All your friends are talking about it. It's too late. When your friends are talking about it, it's too late. It's too late. You probably want to start getting in when your friends start leaving the market. When your friends start leaving the market, that's when you're like, okay, let's get, let's pay attention, right? Let's pay attention. And then you can also help your friends make money. This is how it works. All right. Let me uh, read some questions real quick. Mm. coming out with the hex video coming out with the pulse chain video coming out with some cardano videos guys i'm slamming the internet i promise you i'm slamming the internet like i feel great i feel great all right let's jump into it i'm, I'm talking too much smack i know i am i talk too much smack sometimes i need to go live more because i feel like you guys really like this i feel like you like my energy i feel like in the videos I kind of bring my energy down a little bit just because i'm trying to get this information out but right here i can scream in your face and it feels good. And believe it or not, I like screaming. Okay, let me stop. <laughs> All right, let me screen share really quickly. Don't mind my desktop. All right, so in news today, crypto news today, Warren Buffett says he wouldn't take all the Bitcoin in the world for $25. All right, so this is when you know it's absolutely ridiculous. This is like a signal to me because this man's not stupid. I get it. You know, he thinks that is the greater fool theory. So like you have to sell your Bitcoin to somebody, but don't be dumb. Don't be dumb. And I think it's really important that you look at the price in moments like this, because we are really in a make or break moment for Bitcoin and crypto. And when you see these guys like that, that own banks coming out, shaming crypto, this is a signal to me. They are scared, scared, scared. And let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm not going to, I'm going to pull this up right here. So like, why is Warren Buffett uh, coming into the news, right? Let me just pull this up for you, uh, BTC, USDT. Why is Warren Buffett? <laughs> it's absolutely, I think it's like, it's almost like a, it's like a movie. It's like funny. It's funny at this point. We got Warren Buffett and mainstream media, all of mainstream media finance right here, right here. It's like ridiculous how they time these things. If we go to the daily, they're timing it, guys. We're getting this bounce, right? right here like 
Do you realize how critical this level? I've been watching this. I've been talking about this to you guys over and over again. Literally, if we look at the year, right? So you got to understand these guys are playing it strategic as heck. If we look at Bitcoin from the first, you could see that we've been not perfectly, but we've been going up, right? We've been going up since right around this point. So a lot of people have been making a case, including me, that, hey, look, maybe we continue higher because of the structure that we're seeing right here. Now, I don't find it a coincidence that Warren Buffett comes trying to FUD the market out like he always does. Like, why is Bitcoin? I mean, why is Warren Buffett even talking about Bitcoin? If he thinks it's rat poison, if he thinks it's negative, if he thinks it's horrible, why does he come out every like three months or so saying something negative about Bitcoin? It's because he's trying to move the markets. He has interests, right? He has his own agenda. And as you can clearly see right here at this exact level, it's like, what is he trying to do? Like, he's literally trying to push the market down, guys. Like, and you'll know they play these games. They play these games. If you haven't, if you haven't been in the market, you haven't weathered the storm. If you haven't seen how they attack from all angles, they're playing these games, guys. Influence is the game. Social currency is the game. People look at Warren Buffett like he's like a master at investing. And when this master comes out trying to dump Bitcoin's price, it is so clear, especially when they do it at specific price levels. It's ridiculous. Why didn't Warren Buffett talk about it over here? It's like right here on this trend line. It's ridiculous. Don't let them take advantage of you. This is clearly just some FUD article. He's just talking smack at this point. Um, I, I'm not going to sit here and say he doesn't know what he's talking about. But what I am saying is he clearly has some type of weird agenda. Pay attention to what's going on for real. Try to look in between the articles. It's not really about the article sometimes. Like, remember, guys, if you understand, and let, let, me, let me just take a second. I'm going to stop sharing. Let me just take a second. If you understand how the internet works, and, and this is why I dive extremely deep, extremely deep at understanding how the, the internet is constructed in Fundamental Secrets and Fundamental Secrets 2.0, because people don't even have computer literacy nowadays, okay? So if you understand how search trends work and, and how the, the uh, you know, Google works, you'll come to find out that articles suck. Most articles really suck. If you go to Google, if you look at the news to try to identify credibility and making your investment decisions, you are likely getting strayed the wrong way. Now, what you could do, though, is once you understand how the Internet works and how these news outlets get their views and how they manipulate basically people's minds, then you could read between the article. You could read between the article. When you read between the article, then it starts to uncover their once you know what these people want. Once you know their motivation, then you know why they're doing the, what they're doing, right? And this is like, I believe I am a master at this. Um, I've looked at so many different articles over the time and seen how they played out, not just articles, but like sentiment analysis in general. Um, and again, just read between the articles, like these, like for real. I just wanted to take a second to kind of talk about that. Um, bone, hey, bone guy, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ban you. Stop putting, stop. I'm going to hide a user on this channel. I'm going to remove. All right. Um, let me pin uh, my links real quick, guys. Hey, head on over to the $5 Friday trial. Highly suggest it. I mean, it's my product. I don't really show anything else. Um, also, um, Glassnode. If you're watching this video, give me tier three for free, man. You're too expensive, like 10K a year. I can pay for it, but like, geez, I promote you guys like crazy. You should just definitely give me uh, tier three for sure. And I'm going to show you guys some entree metrics that I think are very interesting. Uh, but yeah, we're just diving in slowly, but surely I want to make sure everybody understands what I'm talking about. This video is going to be long, but it's like one of those situations where you pull out your notes, you start taking notes because I, I'm going to dive pretty deep. So, all right, let's jump a little bit deeper. Okay. So we see Wikimedia foundation has stopped accepting cryptos at the exact trend line. Again, it's like ridiculous. Now I, I kind of get it. Um, the reason why they're stopping uh, I didn't read the article, but it's pretty obvious why they're stopping, um, you know, the cryptocurrency donations. Number one, nobody wants to donate crypto. Let's be real here. Um, everybody's hodling crypto, and I'm going to show you evidence of that. So no one really cares about donating it or using it as a payment platform. There's really no benefit to using crypto as a payment. You still pay taxes. Um, you know, I don't think that's it's a big benefit to pay with crypto anywhere. Um, so, you know, they weren't receiving a lot, probably. Look, they received only 130000 and then 
what's happening now is likely crypto might come down a little bit. I've talked to you, talked about that with you guys a couple of times. And if that does, it's going to make them look bad. So I guess they're trying to save face. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to show you guys that really quickly. Also, I thought this was interesting and it kind of shows um, a little bit of, I like watching what businesses do. It's hard to explain, but if you watch what businesses do, then you can see, because they're trying to make money. That's, that's really, it's like very unbiased. When you watch what a business does rather than what they say, um, it's very unbiased because they have an obligation to their shareholders and to the people that work for them. Um, and they're moving to Dubai. Uh, so you can see that Dubai might become a hub. You know, who knows? I might move to Dubai because I have a crypto company. I don't know. But, you know, paying this capital gains tax in America was ridiculous. I think I spent like almost a quarter million in taxes this year. Um, and it's, out of, it's kind of out of control. Um, so, yeah. Um, people are going to move to crypto friendly countries, uh, you know, especially right now uh, with the potential recession that everybody's screaming about. You know, it's a thing. It's a thing where, you know, people are just trying to save money any way they can. And I would not be surprised if a lot of crypto companies move to Dubai or some other places. All right. So I do want to talk about this because I don't know how many times I called it. Um, if you watch my old Solana videos, I, I pretty much said that they will likely go down again over and over. And it's like every time I call it, it happens. Look. We're in a world of blockchains, and a lot of them are carbon copies, um, and a lot of them are centralized, and a lot of them de defeat the whole purpose of blockchain technology, and it's not really a blockchain. Web3 is, is a buzzword at this point. It's not real. It's just kind of like this thing that people made up. So you know, just be careful where you put your money, especially right now. Um, there could be liquidity issues. So I'm not going crazy right now. Like, uh, so you guys understand how I'm moving as an investor. I'm not like you guys should have saw me in the bull run. Like if you've been here for a while, you saw me in the bull. I was going from chain to chain to chain. I was doing these swaps. I was doing all. I, I like being a Web three user. I, I like being a Web three user. Um, and and I did um just because I want to learn the tech, right? Even though Web three is kind of hollow at this point and it's not really real. Um, there's not that much utilization. Just me understanding the tech will kind of get me far ahead of everybody else. Imagine if you were using the internet before everybody started using it. Um, as as they use it today, right? So. I'm kind of preparing myself uh, skill set wise. So, you know, during the bull run, I was going crazy, right? Now, the bear run's happening. There could be issues. So, just be very careful. There could be liquidity issues. Um, and I'm not doing that now. I'm keeping it on one chain, Ethereum, Bitcoin. I'm buying certain altcoins. I uh, have a list that I dropped in front of my secrets. You get the point. But Solana is not one of them. They're centralized and they have a history of just going down. I think that the amount of time Solana goes down, it's going to be a, it's not going to survive. I don't, Okay, this is a big claim. I'm on live, so I can't say wild stuff. But I don't think Solana is going to survive the bear run. If we do go into a bear run, I just... So personally, I am not a Solana fan. Just to be clear with everybody watching this video, I am not a Solana fan. Uh, they just keep going down um, and they are centralized as heck and they're not transparent um, as other blockchains, all right? So just to give you guys a heads up. All right, if we look at the DXY, well, well I guess, you know, the analysts in our group are pretty good. You know, I talked about it in a couple of videos. The DXY might continue, and you can see on the daily that we're still kind of moving sideways, maybe up on the daily green candle. That's, I guess, good. Now, if you don't know what the DXY is, it's the U.S. dollar currency index. So it's basically comparing the U.S. dollar to pretty much everything else. Now, if you look at it here, it looks like a potential triple top, right? And I've, I've said this in the videos, but there's always a counter argument to everybody's argument. So my argument is maybe, hey, hey, maybe, I mean, I don't want to give you a hopium, but I really want this to come down. Um if it does, it'll kind of give some room to all risk on assets, which can, uh, you know, uh, crypto is considered a risk on asset. But really, if you look at the weekly, which is probably how you should be looking at things for sure, you shouldn't look at it um, on short term time frames, especially not, you know, things like this, like a huge index like this. You could see that, yeah, we've been on an uptrend, guys, since 2008. So I talked about this in my other videos, but it's, it's worth mentioning again. Look, We've been on an uptrend. And, and I think it's very interesting because around 2008, like I keep all my research keeps pointing to 2008 and how they pretty much finessed the world. Like it was almost like the United States finessed everybody. They, they uh, had this big like bubble. Uh, they, they bailed out all the banks um, and everybody took the hit for it. It's almost like the world economy took the hit for America's um, issues. Um, and ever since then, there's a lot of things happening. Like, for example, in Russia, Russia started accumulating a lot of gold in 2008 to make their, I guess, economy recession proof. A lot of things in China happened after that point. But this is like a huge pivotal point here. Uh, so, you know, since then, America has been gaining dominance. It has been gaining dominance over the world when it comes to the dollar. So if you look at it from that perspective, maybe there's a good chance we come up to here. Now, if we come up to here, 
that would be devastating for all risk on assets, um, to be honest with you. But it also might cause recessions um, in the United States, which will cause a lot more issues in other parts of the world. And if it does, it's like a, okay, here's the effect that I keep trying to make. This is the point I'm trying to make with everybody. Look, the Federal Reserve has a meeting Wednesday. I'm going to talk about this, okay? I want to keep my eye close to the Federal Reserve because right now, they could even, I mean, they're already hawkish, right? Everybody's thinking that they're going to lowering, lower spending and we're all going to go into a recession. That's basically the gist right here. I'm sure all of you know this. But if we go into recession, it puts, it puts crypto in a unique situation. And the reason why I say this is because if we watch the truckers, okay, if we watch the truckers in uh, Canada, if we watch what happened um, in Ukraine with the donations, when nations... We could even see this in El Salvador. We could see this in Venezuela. Pretty much when a country is forced to make a decision, not, not like if they're like, it's like convenient, not like, oh, let's adopt the Bitcoin because of our future projections. But like when they're forced, when it's like they have no choice, it seems like countries and entities that have no choice adopt crypto. That's the gist in the world right now. And I think that's pretty well known. I think every investor knows this. If they have no choice, if they're backed against the wall and they have no other tools in their tool belt to finesse something, they typically adopt crypto. Now, the reason why that's important is because if the United States decides to decrease spending and force the economy into a recession and the DXY continues to go higher, what happens is there's other countries that are going to suffer. So if America goes into a recession, then that means other countries are going to be way worse, way worse all over the world. There's going to be like massive depressions in other sides of the world. So if that happens, they will be forced into a corner. So if the DXY goes up, I I'm making a claim here, and I'm not the only one making this claim. There will be other countries that adopt Bitcoin in an aggressive way. Whether that's price, whether that realized in price or not, other countries will be forced to adopt crypto if we go into a recession. If we go to a set recession, there will be other countries. Now, if we don't, and they, the Federal Reserve start, you know, pulls a oop de doop and they're like, hey, yeah, I don't know if we can do hawkish Fed policy. Let's increase spending again. Let's stimulate the economy. Let's go dovish. If they pull a oop de doop okay, which is likely at this point, I mean, they do whatever they want at this point. So if they do that, then it gives room for Bitcoin's price. Bitcoin's considered a risk on asset. Bitcoin, boom, goes to 100K, right? So- it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation, basically, for the Federal Reserve. If they decide to destroy the economy of the world, <laughs> then people will be forced to adopt crypto. If they decide not to, then the price of crypto goes up. Does that make sense, guys? Hopefully that makes sense. Leave, a, leave ones in the chat if you didn't understand what I'm saying, and I'll try to explain it a little bit better. Let me answer some questions really quickly. You know, I feel kind of good. Hopefully you guys feel good today. But I feel really good. Do me a favor, like this video if, if you appreciate the type of content I'm putting out. Um, but yeah, Soul is an ETH alternative, not convinced. Just grabbed a couple because people didn't know. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, Kremlin Farm, I believe Ethereum and Cardano are the most uh, decentralized layer ones. They're my two big, yeah, they are. Um, Ethereum and Cardano are the most decentralized. I know people don't like uh, Ethereum or Cardano, <laughs> but they are. And it's just, it's just real. Um, yeah, let me see if I have any questions here. I just want to explain a little, like my thoughts on the macro. Maybe it's not right. I'm not a professional macro trader by any means at all, but I do want to, uh, I, I'm not the only one thinking that. So just to give you a heads up on that. All right. So let's dive a little bit deeper. If we look at the S&P 500, it's, it's I mean, guys, risk on asset, asset uh, index, guys, risk on asset, it's going down. It's tanking. Um, Bitcoin is kind of following, guys. It's kind of following a little bit. Um, you guys know the deal. We're kind of coming up. I, I showed this towards the beginning. This is like really a make or break. If it does break uh, below this uh, little trend line here, then we'll probably come back down to around 30K. And then it'll be a big question if we can kind of fill this liquidity level and move back up. Uh, but yeah, this is a big make or break for the trend. So if we, if we bounce up, this is pretty bullish. But if we bounce down, completely different scenario. So pay attention to what's going on there. Not too much to show. Now, you guys, look, you know, we're looking at the short term stuff, but I have to show this chart every time. I got to keep reminding you the same thing over and over again. You know, when in doubt, zoom out. Come on, guys. You know, it's not that bad in the grand scheme of things. You just got to wait two years. Like, and I want to show you a chart 
uh, what I'm talking about, the two years, but just wait, just be, be patient. Patience will go a long way, guys. It will go a long way. And if we look at the BLX now, like I made this uh, case in another video, but look guys, it, it like we can, we can look at when, when the market bottomed life cycle, this, these lines are the having, right? So these havings, hopefully you guys know what a having cycle is by now, please. If you don't know what the Bitcoin having is, you need to educate yourself and Google it, do whatever you got to do, but please get caught up. That's ridiculous. If you don't know what the Bitcoin having is, you shouldn't be in crypto, but basically, you know, this is the projected Bitcoin having. If we look at what happened before, you know, approximately 500 days before the Bitcoin having, we start seeing run, runs up in, in Bitcoin's price. So look, 500 days before Bitcoin having. So if we pull that out, you know, to where we are at now, right? Guys, all you got to do is wait till July, August, September of this year, and we will likely see the bottom if we are in a bear run. So if we do break down below this liquidity level, personally, I know um, Will was making some longer projections. He thinks towards the end of the year, which you know kind of aligns with what I'm saying. Uh, so maybe towards the end of 2023, we see the bottom or whatever the case is. But um, yeah, I, I'm pretty optimistic um, and I'm, I'm going to be accumulating for the next three to six months or so. I, and I've, I've said this with, uh, I, I was on Crypto Homies uh, uh, channel and I was like, man, look, this is like the most bullish bear run I've ever seen in my life. Like people are still really optimistic right now. So I would say that, you know, it will likely be around this area. In my personal opinion, if I were to gauge it unbiasedly, August, September, I will be accumulating this whole time and waiting for the market to reverse in anticipation for the Bitcoin having event. Remember, guys, they are scared of, um, you know, this illiquid supply, the supply shock of Bitcoin, this, this effect that Bitcoin has where there's these huge supply shocks, like they are really scared of it. And when I mean they, I mean traditional finance. And we know this because, you know, they launched the ETF like right here at the top, but it was not a spot ETF. It was a futures and they manipulated the market. If they would have launched a spot ETF, people would have took so much Bitcoin off the market. It would have been supply shocks. We would have never saw this decrease in price. They clearly just don't want the supply shock effect. Uh, so yeah, I genuinely think that this Bitcoin having is a big, big thing. It's a huge thing. And, um, yeah, people just seem to keep take they keep taking Bitcoin off the market. And I'm going to show you some on-chain metrics like I always do. But yeah, when in doubt, zoom out. Don't worry. It's not that big of a deal. If you look at over a four-year time horizon, which guys, you got to be patient. Like you have to be patient. If four, four years sounds like a lot, like you shouldn't be trading. Like you just shouldn't be trading. Every decision you make, like whether it's your health, whether it's your business, whether it's your, your investments, you should be thinking long-term. Like, I don't know how else to put you know, tell you, I make, I made a two year business plan. Like it's not like a two month business plan. It, you should be thinking long term, right? So if you're looking at investing and trading, you wait four years, you weather the storm. Look, I mean, real estate, stocks, silver, gold, Bitcoin destroys them all, basically. So it's still, again, even when the market's falling and everybody's, you know, screaming and scared, Bitcoin's still the asset class to, to look at. And again, um, Willie Wu just kind of showing, um, this uh you know supply shock right the same thing i just told you this huge supply shock here uh causes the price to go parabolic and it's been consistent throughout uh bitcoin's history uh if we come over to on-chain metrics by the way glass node if you're watching this video please give me tier three for free don't really do sponsorships but i've been using you guys for so long um you know i'm not paying the 10k i promote you too much so give me tier three and i'll show some more on-chain metrics to my audience and i'm sure a lot of my audience wants to see that um, but yeah, mine, mining difficulty. Look, we had China ban it. Um, it completely recovered and now is breaking all time highs when it comes to mining difficulty. So we're seeing a lot of miners, new miners spawn up. Um, and, you know, that's a good thing for the security of Bitcoin, but also it shows the adoption of Bitcoin. It shows that people are not really that scared. Um, so very interesting there. If we look at the Lightning Network, same thing. Uh, people are using Bitcoin over in the Lightning Network, which is kind of like this new thing. You know, I was there when the Lightning Network first came out. There was literally no usage. Um, so Bitcoin is getting adopted from different areas for sure. Um, and then just kind of like showing a different perspective to what I'm talking about when it comes to, you know, uh, the supply shock, right? The reason why there's a huge supply shock is because a lot of Bitcoin are going into the hands of people that just don't touch their Bitcoin. They just don't want to touch their Bitcoin. The short-term people just, they always leave the market. So we're basically at that point right now uh, where a lot of money is going from short-term holders to long-term holders. And this is like a consistent thing throughout crypto's history. There's just people that hodl, and you guys know this because you are probably one of them. 
people that just hodl and it just takes it off the exchanges. It's a huge effect. Look at this right here. As we can see, Bitcoin, uh, I say I show this like maybe once or twice a week. And I just want to show you like it's a real thing. They're taking Bitcoin off the exchange. What do you want me to say? They're taking it off the exchanges. This is why they didn't want to make a spot ETF. They didn't want to make a spot ETF because this would be amplified a lot. And you can see what, when people take Bitcoin off the exchanges and put it into cold storage wallets, Bitcoin supply shocks and goes up in price like, like crazy. And you could also see that when we're close to the top, Bitcoin gets onto the exchanges and people start to sell. So this is a clear indicator that people are still taking Bitcoin off the exchanges, still accumulating. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm moving with the whales. Like I keep saying in every single video, this is an opportunity to me. And I know, I know it sounds corny because everybody says the same thing, but it is an opportunity. And this is just showing the Bitcoin having, this is just another perspective. This is the issuance for Bitcoin. You can see that every time we have this big drop in issuance, the price goes crazy. So bringing it back to, you know, kind of this original BLX chart over here, guys, if you could hold out for a couple of months and stop crying and, you know, take a deep breath, right? We'll be good money. If you could hold out for a couple of months, we'll be good money. Okay. There's no reason to panic right now. This is the worst time to panic. You should be panicking up here, right? Panic up here. Don't panic over here. Hold I got like, oh man, I got allergies. Um, Florida's crazy. All right. So if we continue a little bit, I want to show you some other stuff, right? So um, this is also interesting. So percent of supply last active, right? So you can see that at the tops, um, the, the percentage of supply uh, that is basically, okay, let's just scroll down so you can read it. The percentage of circulating supply that has not moved in the past year. So you can see the percentage is really low, closer to the tops. So closer to the tops, people just don't move their Bitcoin, right? Um, and you can see this kind of like crazy effect here. Now, you can also see that we are going the opposite way. So typically at the top, you see people moving their Bitcoin a lot. But at the bottom, people are holding their Bitcoin a lot. So you can see right here, 60% of the supply has not moved their Bitcoin in the last one year, right up here. And look, we are moving our way up. So every indicator, if you look at it a long-term long perspective, every single indicator is giving evidence uh, that people are hodling, accumulating, taking Bitcoin off the exchanges, supply shock, is necessary. And it's, this is the illiquid uh, supply change um, in Bitcoin's price. You can see it's becoming more and more illiquid. These are good things. It just might take a little bit longer to play out, which are a lot of people, you know, I was looking in uh, my last video, people were like, oh, uh, on-chain metrics, almost a joke by now. And I get it. You know, it, it is kind of a joke by now, you know, um, because everybody keeps talking about on-chain being bullish. But just remember, on-chain just takes a little bit longer to play out, right? It takes a little bit longer to play out. All right. Let's move in to a little bit of macro. So as you can see, we have a couple events uh, coming up. We're in May. So yeah, tomorrow and the 4th, we'll have um, some Fed meetings and we'll kind of see their vibes. It's not really like, you know, anything specific, but we're just kind of kind of see how they're moving. Um, you know, do they want to destroy the economy more? Hawkish Fed policy. Highly suggest you guys pay attention to that. Also, um, you know, I am going to be um, live streaming through this. If you want to get access to everything, it's literally $5 for five days. Uh, check the pinned comment in the chat. Head on over to FS, get started. Take advantage now. You can cancel it if you want to. In the video on the landing page, I even show you how to cancel it. Uh, at least make it to this live stream because these are big events. Um, and you can see how we move and you can see how professionals are trading instead of being by yourself. The worst thing you could do is be by yourself in this market. Like the, people get scammed all over. So just... Pay attention to what I'm saying right now. This is like the biggest thing. Like I benefited from fundamentals. People don't even get this, but like I made it, but I benefit from it. Like I'm literally asking people in the group, like if I can benefit from it, you can too. So, you know, and I know it's expensive, but I do the $5 trial for a reason. And I'm sure if you reach out to Marty or Johnny, they'll give you a discount. So, hey, don't tell anyone I told you that, but it's true. They, they will likely give you a discount. So yeah, talk to them. All right. And then this was also interesting. Nobody's talking about this, but yeah, uh, the Federal Reserve, it's kind of bearish, but they can unload $1 trillion worth of assets um, into the market. So this is why the Federal Reserve meeting is really important. Uh, they can start, you know, uh, right here, uh, unload its balance by uh, uh, selling $1 trillion of assets into the fragile mar uh, market. So, you know, this could potentially happen. There's much more they could do, guys. Like when it comes to uh, hawkish Fed policy, it's not just the uh, rate hikes, right? Um, there's all types of ways they can lower spending and uh, yeah, you know, you should definitely educate yourself and understand how that works. But yeah, I'll, I'll be making videos on that soon. Um, and then this is also really interesting. What we're looking at is Bitcoin sensitive uh, equity index. These are basically companies 
um, that have Bitcoin on their balance sheet, similar to like MicroStrategy. And you can see that they're tanking before Bitcoin does. And it makes sense because their stocks um, and, you know, the stock market's trembling right now. Uh, but yeah, they, they're doing pretty bad. So it's kind of like, I, I can't just show you guys the bullish case. If you want, just bull, bull and make you feel good in your tummy, you know. If you want some warm milk before you go to sleep, <laughs> just kidding. If you guys want to feel comfortable, go to other channels. This channel is going to give you the real insight. So there is downside potential, guys. Like we talked about it in other videos, you know, and this is similar for all crypto. There could be some downside potential. So just pay attention to what's going on. Watch the Fed meeting. We could potentially come down to 30K. That is very likely. Okay. Now, if I were to look at it from my perspective, I'm bullish long term. You know, I, I got to watch my coaches. They're, they're just, they do uh, short-term trading way better than I do. So I got to watch them. And what they're, th what they're feeling right now is, yeah, we're going to probably come back down to 30K. Some of them are feeling even worse. Um, and, you know, some of them are a little bit more bullish. But everybody, sim they all kind of agree um, that we will likely come down for Bitcoin. So just pay attention. In the short term, we can get some buying opportunities. Don't be scared. Uh, just see it for what it is, right? Now, I thought this was interesting as well, um, because like, contrary to what I, uh, you know, my coaches are talking about in the, in the FS and how it could be like short-term uh, I think like in the long term, we should pay attention to what's really going on, because I think a lot of these macro investors are basically calling the recession. They're saying that America is going to go into a recession. And if you would have tried to make that prediction, you would have been wrong for the past 21 years. Every single time there's been this big event where, oh, America is going to crumble, right? Pretty much everyone's been wrong. And America somehow finds a way uh, to, <laughs> you know, to start spending again and letting the markets flourish. So it's kind of a losing bet. And to, to try to time a 94 year, a one in 94 year event is very, very unlikely. So I do hear a lot of the macro investors. I do see a lot of the YouTubers. They're all calling for a recession, but realize, I just want, like it could happen, but just realize what decision you, they are making. Like that is like a huge lifetime decision that they are trying to time. They're trying to time it because, you know, again, look at the S&P 500. They seem to pull tricks out of their bag consistently over and over again. Um, and, and this is the same thing for crypto. You know, they're trying to call, call, there's like a lot of assumptions being made here. Number one, a lot of macro investors are calling the recession. That's ridiculous, by the way. Just, just understand how hard it is to call that, okay? And then the second one they're assuming is that risk, that Bitcoin is just perfectly a risk on assets going to follow all stocks. Those are two major crazy assumptions. Because remember, Bitcoin and crypto was made to get away from traditional finance. And although the price in the short term is showing correlation, it does not mean that people will not flee to crypto. Because remember, there's nothing else to buy. The only thing right now you can really invest in where you're not losing money is cash. That's the only thing you can really invest in. So everything else sucks. And you know, really, crypto is the only one that's a world currency that's not tied down to US dollars. So everybody's making prediction about the, what the US is going to do. But crypto is the only one that's not US specific. It's world specific. There's, only, there's nothing else that's world specific. So I say that this assumption that we are going to go into a recession and then a second assumption that crypto is going to follow perfectly, that's a hard, that's like a very hard argument to make. And I'm willing to bet over the long term that this, these two things, one of them is not going to work. And I think it's the crypto one. I think, you know, if we do go into a recession or whatever the case is, hawkish Fed policy, I do think that crypto can separate itself for real. And I know like it's a meme at this point because everybody keeps showing the charts of how they're correlated. But the point is, is that Bitcoin moves when, it's want to, when it wants to. There's one thing I learned from being in cryptocurrency for the past like, you know, six years. There's one thing I learned. Bitcoin has a mind of its own. That's a fact. It is, it is weird. It's super weird. And you can call it correlated all you want, but Bitcoin's a world currency. It has a mind of its own. Um, so I'm not making that claim that it's, it's pu purely correlated, that there's no potential for it to separate. I'm not going to say that. I think you're statistically an idiot for saying that. I think in the short term, it's great to throw stats. That's fine. But in the long run, I think you'd be dumb to try to say that it's perfectly correlated to risk on assets. It's not. It was made not to be. It was made not to be. And through hyperinflation all through 2020 with the COVID event, it outcompeted everything. Bitcoin outcompeted everything. I don't know how many times I got to tell you. Let's wake up to the facts. The facts say that Bitcoin had better percentages than any other risk on asset. So you could say it's correlated by price. That's fine. But in the long run, I think that would change. And I really, really, really don't want to time that either. Like, I don't know. 
like maybe short, like I'm just not, maybe I'm not in the short term thing. You know, I got, I got a lot of things going on. I got fundamental secrets 2.0. I got kids. I got, you know, um, coinpicks.io. You should definitely head on to coinpicks.io and use that pricing data over coin market cap. It's better. I made it. We made it. My team made it. Um, so I got a lot of things going on and, and I have to be kind of like a longer type of trader, but I just really in my head, like, even if I just traded all day, right. If I just traded all day, scalp trader, day trader, right. In my head with my hodl bag, do you really think I'm going to try to time the parabolic growth of Bitcoin and cryptos? I'm not going to time that. Like we just said, right? We literally just said it. Bitcoin maybe can come down 18 to 20%. That's fine. Like 18, 20%. I'll take it. I'll take it. Now I do know that if you lose 18%, you have to make much more. You have to make like 30 or 40% to, to recoup the losses. But again, like it's risk to reward in my eyes. It's risk to reward. And from a long-term perspective, if we look at this, like, do you really want to bet that Bitcoin, like it's going to hundred K it's going to 180 K. I'm not going to bet like Bitcoin's at the bottom guys. Let me refresh this page. So you can see it. Bitcoin's at the bottom. That's what it looks like to me. I'm not going to try to save 20% to miss out on this big parabolic pump. Everybody's going to like, everyone misses out. I hope you guys know that. Like the day traders, the scalp traders, they miss out when big, when Bitcoin goes parabolic, that's when they lose money. That's what people don't, don't really uh, make clear um, is that, yeah, like, you know, scalp traders, they, they make money on a downturn and sideways and, uh, you know, it's great. But when P Bitcoin goes parabolic, they all miss out. And it's not about the gains of a couple of days or even a couple of weeks. It's about how much you make over a long period of time. And if you quantify all of your trades in the short run over a four-year period, if, we're four, if you look at a four-year period, quantify all your little short-term trades, likely you will lose money to someone that can just hold and, and, and dollar cost average the right way. That's just the way it goes. Now, and this is the same for all coins too, not just Bitcoin. It's the same for all coins. So please, risk to reward. Tell me, it does not look like, like to save 20% or whatever. It looks way better. I'm not going to sell the bottom. Why would I sell the bottom? I'm not selling the bottom. You're crazy. I'm a double up. I'm a, I, I, and just to be clear, I already sold out. I have like 15% crypto. That 85%, I'm waiting for the bottom. I'm going to go in. I'm not going to sell what I currently have. I'm going to let it ride. I'm going to let it ride. I'm going to find more money and I'm going to buy even more. That's just, the, that's the way I'm moving. Now, I thought this was interesting as well. It's looking at the S&P 500. Um, and basically, um, you know, this is showing uh, the worst years in S&P 500 as a start. So like from the start of the year um, till now, you could see that the worst year was in 1932. We had like a negative uh, 28%. And it happens to be that 2020 is like the third worst year in like S&P 500 history. Um, but if you, if you look at it, you know, everything that happened after was really positive for the S&P 500. And this is, again, bringing it back to what I keep trying to tell you guys, like these macro people, it's, I, I love, I learn macro, I think to a certain extent, I have like a minor in macroeconomics because I've been studying it so much. But like, these guys are calling the recession, fam. <laughs> like, I don't know how to put it. Like, they're calling something that's hard to call. Like, it's the hardest thing in the world to call. Um, so, you know, I'm going to play the, the side of the stats. And it looks like, you know, even if we have these bad times, typically after follow really good times. So, you know, even if it's crypto is a risk on asset, you know, I... I'm going to let, I'm going to hold my, my Bitcoin again, bringing it back to risk to reward over a long period of time. I don't think selling now is a good risk to reward. It's probably actually dumb. Um, but yeah, let me just talk about this last project and I'll kind of answer some questions for you guys. Uh, and then we'll conclude this. So bridgeless cross chain swaps. This is the beauty of crypto. When we do see these markets go down, it allows crypto companies to really start to innovate. And, and this is interesting. Bridgeless cross-chain swap. So I can literally right now, and you can go use it for yourself. I haven't used it. I haven't even made a transaction. I just saw it and I wanted to update you guys. So uh, don't kill me for updating you. Um, but yeah, the point is, is that I can trade from Ethereum to Polygon. So I could sell an ETH, send it to Polygon. And let me just refresh this page because it's saying it doesn't have a quote. I thought it was crazy. I've never seen anything like this. So if I want to sell one ETH, it's giving me a quote. I could sell the ETH and I would get the USDT on Polygon. And look, zero slippage and only one gas fee. We've never seen that before. Look, when the markets go down, and I saw this all over, believe it or not, like the big thing in crypto in 2015, 2016 was like Tron. Like people don't want to believe this, 
But the big thing in crypto was Tron. That was like dApps, like back in back in the day. And then obviously we clearly innovated out of that. Like clearly the innovation started to thrive on other chains. When we go into the bear run, this allows everything to grow and become better. So these times are necessary. Kind of what I said in the last video. Look, if you want the, the forest to get bigger, the tree's got to burn down and give nutrients to the soil. Like you got to die. Like that's just the way it goes with your, your mind, actually. Everything in life. You got to get to that point where like, you let go, right? And, and that's kind of how the market's, it's like letting go. Like 90% of the people in this market are going to leave. If we go into a bear run, 90% of the people are going to leave. But that 10% that stay, that's innovation. The innovation is created and it allows for the new cycle in the future to get even bigger, which I showed you so many different stats and statistics on how it's going to get bigger. And that's basically the gist, guys. And I will continue to report and become hardened. And guess what? You know, it's funny. You guys are watching my trader progression as I go. Now you're going to see me jump on on-chain investigation. I'm learning Python. I'm learning how to, you know, um, aggregate data science charts. You like, you see my progression. I'm hardening, right? Through this bear run, I'm hardening. So it's like, literally, it's just a natural stage of life. Nothing goes up like the S&P 500. That's artificial. But, you know, life's ups and downs. It's as simple as that, guys. So take it for what it is. But yeah, I think I'm pretty optimistic for the next couple of years or so. Um, let me see. I'm going to try to answer some questions, guys, and then I'm going to kind of check check out here. But yeah, um, why well, talk about Willie Woo? His fund blew up in 2020. Dude's a hack. He's not. He's just a data science guy in crypto. I don't care about Willie Woo. I care about his charts. So I look at his charts from that perspective. All right. What we got here? I had a feeling is the next economic crash inflation would be the catalyst needed for the decoupling. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so Matt is our one of our uh, coaches in FS. Um, you know, he keeps up with the group. But yeah, you could take advantage of that. Talk to Marty. If you guys want a discount, talk to Marty or Johnny. I don't know what you want to tell you. Just talk to Marty or Johnny. Uh, he'll, they'll definitely help you out. Um, yeah, I think uh, CRO did some crazy stuff. I heard uh, uh, Marty was talking about it. Uh, one of our guys, one of our coaches, you know, CRO... Um, I think they just lowered their payments or something and people have their money locked up. It's kind of crazy, actually. Uh, this guy said, funny that you said that I have 70K invested and I give no, I'm not going to say it because I see how bullish crypto is. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's only about time. Exactly. I mean, that's a positive perspective. That's the way you should be thinking about everything. Like you should never, ever think about anything short term. Hello, everyone. What did I miss? You missed the whole thing, man. Hey, uh, just watch the recording. I'm going to uh, upload it as soon as we get off here. I'm um, just trying to answer some questions, guys. What you got for me? Just trying to answer some questions, guys. What you got for me? Uh, let's see what we got. All right. <clears throat> All right, let's see. You got boom, boom, boom. Is Phantom dead in water? I think every crypto is following Bitcoin. I don't think you should look at anything specific. All right, guys. Doesn't look like there's too many questions. I appreciate for the. I appreciate you guys for coming to this live stream. I'm gonna end it here. I didn't want to edit a video today, so I popped this open. I will make more live streams for you guys so I can answer your questions. If you like the quality of this content, hit like. If you don't, leave some constructive criticism. Subscribe for more video updates. And like I always say, if you don't get with it, you will get left behind, guys. I have a $5 five-day trial for our, our coaching. Um, that will be in the pinned comment, as well as follow me on Twitter, like right now. I don't know what you're doing. Just follow me on Twitter, like right now. Like just, just follow me on Twitter. I'm doing so many different things there and I'm being way more active. And hopefully, you know, Elon can come up with this like censorship resistance on Twitter because I do believe I'm getting censored all over on uh, YouTube. So yeah, follow me on Twitter because you're going to get the notifications there first for everything I do. Uh, but yeah, that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.